children come to second grade with a wide range of abilities. For teachers, that means there's no one-size-fits-all when it comes to meeting the needs of every student. It takes carefully planned instruction, presented in a variety of grouping formats, whole class, small groups, student pairs, or one-on-one -on -one teacher-student instruction. Alternate grouping practices um, based on a significant research base are really quite effective. And the fun thing is that they're also quite practical for second grade teachers. Now, the most important thing for second grade teachers to remember is that they need to provide some time in which small group activities related to reading, writing, and spelling occur. The students in Becky Persley's class and other classrooms we visited show how grouping can be effectively implemented with second graders. But these teachers and others agree it takes extra time and effort to teach students to work well in groups and to plan worthwhile activities for each group. It takes a, a lot of time and, and it takes um, a lot of courage, but I think that courage is easily fed by seeing that your students are so well engaged. Let's take a look at how teachers use grouping effectively. At the beginning of the school year, second grade teachers give an individual reading inventory or other assessment to determine each student's instructional needs. These data provide the information needed to make initial grouping decisions. And progress monitoring is ongoing throughout the year, guiding how teachers regroup their students. Whenever I've monitored children, I try to group together their needs to pull together my groups. Um, sometimes individually. Some lessons, of course, can be done whole group. So whatever method you take or that you use for monitoring your children, just know that it's essential that you listen to your children very often. One upon a time there was a young man. As I'm doing the anecdotal records each week or taking running mm -hmm. records, at the end of the week I do look over everyone's and review that to see if there are any patterns that I see from several children and if I do see a pattern with several children I'll group those students together to maybe reteach a skill that they didn't particularly master that week or um, if there's just one or two I'll take those two together and reteach that and if there's something that I see that may someone may need extension with I'll pull them together to maybe extend something that I feel like they could learn this type of flexible grouping not only opens up opportunities for intensive instruction, but it lets students work with many different classmates. With ongoing assessment and planning, teachers discover how using a variety of grouping formats opens up a range of opportunities for teaching and learning. It opens up so much time for you to work with small groups and for individuals who need that time where you can do so much reteaching and where you can help the children grow in their particular uh, areas that they have needs.